Okay, so this is uh, the Dragonary 2022 study number eight. Now this guy, um, again, I, I took him in the Photoshop a little bit to uh, darken this down and, and just uh, create a gray value because I wanted to try and mess around a little bit with not making all the dragons the same middle tone, even though I'm using this same underpainting, uh, what I call the under, my underpainting palette for you know these these studies um, so basically my intention was to try and paint this guy as though he was white or a light color instead of just a middle tone color um, and I was able to, to kind of see where that was going in Photoshop a little bit even though when I prepped this board I really only mounted I only uh, scanned the sketch and then did the, the toned treatment and, and printed that out and mounted it down I didn't wind up uh, printing the Photoshop, what, what I actually did in Photoshop. That was just sort of something more to, for me to see where it was going. So again, you know, with that in mind though, I, I start to establish some tone in the background. And that, uh, since I know this guy's gonna be a lighter value, you know, I want the, the background to be a little bit darker. And instead of going into a middle tone or the darks right away which I normally would do I want to kind of establish some of the higher key parts of the palette um, and then work into those you know in some cases the shadows won't need to be as dark uh, on something on an object that's uh, that's white for example or a very light color silver or something of that nature so you can see here where I'm really starting from the white down to the you know, just a few stages in the value palette and not laying in the darks just yet. Now, once I get some paint down, then I start to get in there and establish them. But even the darks are still kind of a middle tone on this palette um, where normally they would be much darker. One thing that's that's nice though is I can see how you know the white being laid down on that toned ground. Um, it shows me there what my highest highlight is. So you can see that I kind of uh, and I fussed around with a few extra tones on the palette where I have these light sort of uh, pinkish brown colors, um, and I have a few more uh, of those designated on the palette for this one just because this is going to be such a bracketed va uh, value piece. You know, I, I'm, we'll see as this goes on, but I don't think I really use any real black in this, maybe a little around the eye, but the dark, dark in around and under the, uh, the fin on the side at this point is, is mostly burnt umber. But it just looks so much darker because everything else is so high key, you know, is so uh, light in value. It really it's a, a little more of a subtlety approach you know the uh with this type of palette than you know what what i had done before or in some of these other ones now, of course you know i'm constantly flipping these things around uh working on them and doing them in sort of a one session sitting like this um i do wind up with a little paint on my fingers but uh you know the the direction is is helpful for me to flip them like this if I'm going to be moving the brush direction like like I am on the spines of uh, the fins on the on the side of his head here and you know I've said this before but my real you know my real main goal I mean, I'm trying to keep this thing in control but it's really just to cover everything first just get to the point where I have paint down on the piece and I can now push it around into its final resting place um, you know, the first thing is just to cover the cover the canvas. So that's sort of what I'm working around doing. And, you know, I'm doing it fairly deliberately. I, I certainly don't want to blow out my drawing with the white and the higher key stuff. The paint just has a higher opacity level. So it is knocking the sketch out more quickly than uh, some of the other ones that have been more middle toned using that the, the more transparent burnt sienna.
you know, the white really, really uh, pushes it towards an, op an opaque quality. All right, so the head's looking pretty good. The head and the fin's looking pretty good. Now to get into this neck, which again is something that, you know, uh, it's, it's the same approach. You know, we're gonna lay it in with the higher values and just be very uh, minimal with the darks to give it the sense that it's white and the real high highlights, uh, even though, you know, they are sort of approached like it's wet and they, they're just the highest highlights. It's um, a lot of this is just a step down from that highest highlight. So a much higher key approach. Too much of that dark color had I laid in a lot of the thing, uh, a lot of the the definition and the scales and stuff, and tried to bring the white to that later. It would have turned into a kind of a mucky, muddy mess. That would have been more the color of the of the uh, of the background. You know, would have been far too dark. And again, here you can start to see. You know, even though the white is much more opaque, I can still see parts of the parts of the drawing through it things that I established patterns in the, in the scales and stuff. So in my usual way, I start to just move around and, and pick away at what you would see. You would see less of that um, little scale detail as it reaches the highlight areas and the shadow areas. You see more detail in the middle tones. And of course, uh, as I've said, everything is wet at this point. So um, if something starts to look too harsh or anything like that, I can always get in here and blend it down a little bit or soften it a little bit. And then just a few more little tweaks at this point and, and this guy's looking pretty good. <laughs> 